Welcome to the Worldwide Evangelistic Ministry with Brother Terrell. And now, Brother Terrell. If you have your Bibles, I'd like you to turn with me to Matthew 9, 35. Jesus went about all cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then he said unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenty, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that will send forth the labors into his harvest. Now, I want to speak to you just for a few moments before we take you into one of our worldwide missionary Crusades. Jesus went about preaching the gospel into all cities and villages. He has spoken to me, given me a commission to go into all the world, to take his message of divine healing and salvation to the ends of the earth. And truly the harvest is plenty. The labors are few. We need more missionaries. We need more men and women praying and send him this gospel into all the world. So Jesus said, Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that is send for the labors. And Paul teaches us how can we go except we're sent. My plea to you and my invitation is for you to pray and let the Lord speak to you and send us into all the world. For this gospel of the kingdom must be preached into all the world, and then shall Jesus come. And this evangelistic ministry is reaching out, and your prayers and your support, we welcome that we may go. Now I'd like to tell you a story and to take you into one of our great missionary revival crusades. Modern Haiti is a classic study in social and religious contradictions. It is populated by a people whose ethnic heritage began amidst the mortal conflict between the peace-loving Arawak Indians and the fierce cannibalistic Carib Indians, who were the island's inhabitants when Columbus arrived there in December of 1492. For more than 300 years after Columbus, an aggressive colonization effort brought about the grim importation of tens of thousands of black slaves from the western coasts of Africa. The slave labor was used in the sprawling cane fields and in the sugar factories developed and operated by the French and Spanish planters. The Arawaks and Caribs, whose physical stamina was no match for the Africans, were gradually absorbed into the black culture and bloodlines. Thus, the ancestry of the modern Haitian is a unique blend of ancient ethnic origins and primitive instincts that run deep and proud within the somber reaches of his mind. The French planters established a rich and enviable lifestyle, reminiscent of the European culture they had left behind, but their slaves were among the world's most oppressed people. In 1795, the island erupted into bloody rebellion. The French were driven from the island, and Haiti became the world's first black republic. Christianity had come to the island with Columbus, and the Roman Catholic Church had entrenched itself firmly in the culture of the Haitian people. When the new government became stabilized under Jacques de Saline, the Constitution provided for a distinct separation between church and state, a turn of events that infuriated the Vatican authorities in Rome. In angry retaliation, the Vatican refused to allow its priests to continue entering the country, and the Black Republic was left to its own religious contrivances for the next half of the century. The pageantry and ritualism of the Roman Catholic Church had made lasting impressions on the Haitian native's mind, 
that now began to mix with the ancient superstitions and tribal customs that had come with him from Africa. Thus, during the 55 years that marked the absence of a supervised Roman Catholic priesthood, a darkly humanistic religion began to insinuate itself around the evening fires of the native communities. It was an eerie and mysterious blend of vaguely remembered Catholic ritual and the primitive African voodoo rites that had always lingered near the surface of the Haitian mind. The voodoo ritual begins with a salute to the mysteries, the spirits that will be called into the presence of the worshipers by the Hongan, who is the voodoo counterpart of the Roman Catholic priest. The spirit enters by the Potomaton, the center pole found in all voodoo temples. A liberal supply of rum is sprinkled around the base of the Potomaton to appease the spirit's famous thirst. He will consume the food placed there by the Hongan and his followers, using their bodies as the ingesters of his food. Once the spirit's nourishment requirements have been satisfied, he will mount the bodies of the Hongan and the dancers and project himself through their dances and voices. After these salutary duties, the Hongan carefully draws the verver, a logo that symbolizes the character of the god spirit that is being called. This one is for the spirit Legba, the voodoo equivalent of Saint Peter. Finally, the living sacrifice to the god is made, and a blood bond between man and spirit is formed. A cross of blood is placed on the forehead to symbolize the spirit of Gid Nimbo, the spirit of final death. The dancers and the Hongan bring the worship to a close by giving themselves over to the frenzy of spiritual possession. The Catholic missionaries and priests began returning to the island in the late 1800s, but the Haitian native would never again be swayed from his obsession with voodoo. It is estimated that more than two-thirds of the native population continues to practice some form of voodooism, along with an active participation in various expressions of the Christian faith. Today, Haiti pays a grim price for its religious double standards, despite the tireless and unselfish efforts of many world relief organizations that have attempted to provide the Haitian people with medical care and vocational training for industry and agriculture. Disease and poverty still run rampant. The national average family income still remains below $100 per year. In December 1979, the David Terrell Missionary Revival Crusade team arrived in Haiti to conduct still another in a long series of full gospel Holy Ghost healing revivals. This one in the suburbs of Port-au-Prince, deep in the heart of the city's sprawling poverty area. The David Terrell team set out to prove our Lord and the power of his spoken word to change all things. We're just thrilled to death about the way the Lord is moving in your city here. 
as to the success of the Port-au-Prince crusade vanished. Then, as he began to develop the sermon text, it became clear that he was preaching to a spiritually hungry people. And he said, now go wash it out in the pool of Siloam, which has been interpreted since. And the man went and washed his eyes, and he came seeing. You see, Jesus said, whatever he says, do. Jesus said, do. Yes, sir. You got to do something to get a miracle. You got to do something to receive from God. God tells you to do something. You do it. And Jesus said, have faith. Have confidence in God. Believe Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ will give you a miracle. He's a miracle, Jesus. He's a Holy Ghost, Jesus. Jesus is Jesus the Spirit. We find in the Bible, we find in the Bible there was a man who had policy. And he couldn't walk. He shook all the time. He came to Jesus. They let him down through the top of the house. On the bed because of a great crowd of people. And Jesus saw that faith. Jesus saw that faith. And he said, Man, get off your bed. Rise up and walk. Your sins are forgiven. You're healed. Some of them criticized him. They said, Why, Jesus, who can forgive sin but God only? Jesus said, How easy is it for me to say? Man, thy sins be forgiven thee. There's no difference in getting saved than getting healed. The same power that saves you. The same faith that saves you. The same faith that heals you. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus, the Son of You know what He'll do for you? He'll give you a divine miracle. Jesus, a miracle divine. Amen. He'll save you. Jesus, He'll save you. He'll heal you. Jesus, He'll give you. He'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Jesus, He'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost. He'll do great wonders for you. Jesus, He'll fix the miracle. He'll heal all of your sick. Jesus, He'll give you all of your diseases. He'll give you joy. Jesus, He'll bring you joy. He'll give you peace. Jesus, He'll bring you peace. He'll give you love. He'll give you amour. He'll give you other tongues. Jesus, He'll bring you love. He'll give you the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Jesus, He'll bring you the gifts of the Holy Ghost. He'll move in your life. He'll save your home. Every night, I've told you 
Hallelujah! How the Lord healed me of bone cancer. I had nine operations. I had nine operations. I was nine years old. I weighed 32 pounds. The doctor said I'd die. Doctor said I'd die. But my mother said I'd live. My mom said I'd live. My mom said I'd live. She believed God. You know what you say? It ain't what the doctor says. It's what Jesus says. If Jesus says you're going to live. And going to be healed. You're going to live. And you're going to be healed. God is power. Your healer. And go to a good church that teaches the Holy Ghost. That teaches the apostles' doctrine. And also, if you preaches Christ in you the hope of glory. Oh, all right, the greatest miracle of your life. That's what you people need in here in Haiti. All you people in Haiti need the great revival of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Right now, all of this congregation, I want you to pray. I want to pray for this mass audience tonight. That Jesus is going to touch you. Jesus is baptized with the Holy Ghost. God in the name of Jesus. Baptized with the Holy Ghost. Healed by power. Healed by the glory of God. God, I believe you right now. That you'll come to the rescue. I've got Jesus as my healer. I said, Jesus, we're going to get his soul, I said. By faith in God. Save the Lord. 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 Save in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 from a three-month fast undertaken to strengthen his world of revival efforts, David Terrell's compassion for the Haitian lady's plight showed clearly in his countenance. The David Terrell ministry has long been totally committed to an absolute belief that the healing and salvation of all mankind was purchased on the cross at Calvary and that the incarnate word of God manifested in Jesus Christ 
when it is uttered, adds length to life, and brings the attendant blessings of prosperity and peace.
Thank you and God bless you. 